Good kitten internet, I thought I would give you a quick tour of where I'm going to be living for the next four days. Well, three days at this point, it's later on in the evening. Um, so, yeah, uh, let's go ahead and get started. So, this is the entryway. Um, this is basically, so it's entryway, bathroom over to the right, bed, chair, desk, TV, incredibly quiet fridge that doesn't really do anything, and that's about it. So I'm glad that you've, now I'm going to go into more detail, so, hi! So, let's go ahead and show you what I'm doing, because I'm bored out of my freaking mind. So, I have hanging up the shirts that I'm going to be wearing, um, plus uh, Creator's flannel, because it was very wrinkly. Um... So I have all the clothes that I'm going to be wearing set out over here. Ooh, low frame rate. Probably due to the low light in this corner because there is no light in this entire section for some reason. And I have all the lights on in this room right now. So anyway, I have all of my clothing set aside. These will be enough for the time that I'm in quarantine. Because I'm not exactly going to be getting sweaty when I'm just stuck here. In here is the bathroom. Very white themed, to put it mildly. This is a very typical Scandinavian bathroom for a hotel, in my mind. So you have the detached foss, uh, detached shower head, plus double handles. This is something that I think Americans should probably get behind. You have one handle for pressure and one handle for temperature. It even tells you, hey, look, this exact point is 38 degrees. And it won't let you go past there without having to press the button. For safety reasons. That's a good idea. Good job, Norway. Actually, I think all of Scandinavia uses something similar. Um, toilets with built-in buttons for flushing. I have yet to use the toilet in here. Sort of. I'll get to that in a moment. Mirror. Hi again. Um, plus, I have some of my toiletries out, so I have a shower speaker. If anybody wanted to know just how hard the water is in Madison, Wisconsin, Look at how many hard water deposits there are on here, and realize that I only bought this six months ago. Yeah. Not great. Anyway, deodorant. Small tube of toothpaste. I might want to pick up a larger tube of toothpaste at some point. Beard trimmer. Callus remover thingy. Soap. Medication for the day. I love this little daily medication thing that I have. I'll show that more in a moment. Plus, we have places for hanging hand towels and so on. Not that I have all that many. Blow dryer, not that I need it. You know, my glorious hair and all, which is actually going to start growing out a bit because I didn't bring my regular razor. I only brought the trimmer with me. So, I only brought the trimmer because I was getting really concerned about going over capacity. Anyway, um, beyond that, we have a heated towel rack right here with a, hey, look, you should hang up your towel and reuse it to make Mother Nature smile, plus a hand towel, and a couple of cups. That's it for the bathroom. Let's go ahead and turn that off, because there's no reason to have lights on when I'm not in the room. All right, going over here. This is actually where I'm storing my main suitcase. This is an anti-fatigue standing mat, by the way. Um, Creator bought one. Not this one, actually. I'm giving them mine. But they couldn't put it in their suitcase the last time they were in the U.S., so I brought it with me. By the way, this also doesn't fit in my suitcase. That's the reason why it's very wrinkly right now. It'll even out. Anyway, that's where all of my spare clothes and... Candies and snacks and so on for creatine and tea and a whole bunch of things are in that bag. This is actually my medication organizer. See? I can order it however I choose. I Each one of these is removable easily. And they have a sunny side for daytime pills. And a not so sunny side for nighttime pills. And since I can organize it however way I want, it makes it quite a bit easier if I'm going on a week-long trip, but not necessarily starting on a Monday or a Sunday. 
Plus, I'm trying to get used to um, European style of Monday through Sunday instead of Sunday through Saturday. I think the European style actually does make more sense. But it comes in this little cheap plastic case thing. It has little feet so it doesn't slide around super easily. It's relatively hardy. That's nice. Uh, passport. Wallet. Uh, on the bed, there are two sets of lights, one of which is for illumination, one of which is for specifically reading, and it's pointed at the chairs of respective sides. Speaking of the bed, the bed is okay. I mean, it's a very thin mattress on top of box springs, but the, oh, on top of a mattress with box springs built in. So mattress side, box spring side. Anyway, um, two very uh, not great pillows. Uh, that's probably my biggest problem with the bed. Um, comes with a duvet that's right here. They actually have a second duvet inside of that bench. This is actually my weighted blanket, um, one of many that I have. Um, I was requested to bring this with me. This caused me oh so many problems <clears throat> because it is heavy. And that caused all of my baggage to start going over full really fast. The weighted blanket is actually going to be staying in Norway. I mean, not in the hotel room. Um, because I'm going to be moving to Norway. I might as well move them now, or move one now, because I have four. So, I might as well use it while I'm here. So, I have it spread out. Over here, we've got my charging corner. Uh, normally, my phone would be charging here, but I'm currently using it to record. So, instead, we have... My tablet. The poor thing is getting really slow. My e-reader. Normally I wouldn't bother charging it except one. I've been using it for a while and it's actually down to what? 69% battery, I think. So it, if I kept using it as heavy as I have been, I might not have enough battery life for the entire trip without having to charge. Oh no! Also because I decided to set it up where I was charging everything. There is a laptop charging and also my electronic toothbrush. Um, or electronic toothbrush, electric toothbrush. My electric toothbrush is, let me pick that up really fast. So this thing, it is it has two toothbrush heads in it. The actual charging, to, or the actual toothbrush body itself and the entire case, one, charges over micro USB rather than having charge over some proprietary format that I would need an adapter for or not be able to use at all because it doesn't handle 220 or 240 when I move. But also, this thing has an ultrasonic, um, not ultrasonic, uh, ultraviolet light UV cleaning thing for the brush heads. So it keeps the brush heads able to run longer. And even though this is a cheapo, practically off-brand Chinese product, it actually uses a standardized brush head. So I can just buy ones in regular stores even around here. I really like that. And my laptop, which is also charging USB-C, by the way, USB-C, 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 everything USB-C. Um, that is resting inside of the case for my gaming machine that I brought with me. Yes, I actually brought a gaming desktop with me, and I'll get to that in a moment. And down here on the floor, you can see the Satachi brand name on it. That is my awesome charger. It charges four different devices at once, Two USB-A, two USB-C. The USB-C can be up to, I want to say it's 92 watts of power, which is well over what my laptop uses. My laptop uses like 35. And that's great. It means that only one charger is needed for everything I want to charge. And this is what my setup. This is the only things that I'm actually charging. It's great. One downside, as I found out on the flight over, that demands so much power that airport or airplane power plug things just shut off when it's plugged in rather than you know actually charging something that's going to be problematic it was on the way over but it's not that big of a deal because everything was already charged i'll just have to remember on the way back anyway there's a lamp in this corner that's not plugged in don't know why just is there chair this chair is okay on comfort it's not great I'd prefer a recliner, but, you know, beggars, choosers, etc. Going over here, this is another one of my bags. If you can't tell, I threw a neon green piece of duct tape on all of my bags. That way it's really easy to tell which ones are mine at a very long distance glance. 
Uh, this is the bag that I'm currently using that's holding my dirty laundry. So the only thing in there was what I was wearing for the trip over to here. This is my gaming computer. This is a very small computer, if you can't tell. Um, let's see. Let's use Xbox controller for reference, because I don't have any bananas right now. Or, ooh, ooh, I have an apple. Let me grab an apple for reference. Apple for reference. So, yeah, this thing is really small, and it's compact, and it's almost as powerful as my main gaming machine, actually. If I had swapped CPUs on this, this would actually be or more powerful than... Or if I had swapped CPUs, it would be as powerful as my gaming machine, because it's currently using my gaming machine's video card. Video card's here. I can't take this apart at the moment to show you, unfortunately. I did not bring my screwdriver set, and these require... Yeah, you're not going to be able to see that very well. Maybe that one? Kind of. Anyway, they're Star Driver. So, yeah. Um, so this is a sandwich-style small form factor PC. So the video card's on this side, and the motherboard's actually on this side. And they both face out. So it draws in fresh air from the top and bottom of the computer, and then blows it out the sides. So this has my main gaming desktop's video card in it right now. This is a GTX 1080 Ti. And on this side, it has an AMD Ryzen 1700X. It happens to have been the CPU that my housemate had replaced, so I was able to get it pretty cheap. And 32 gig of RAM, plus a half terabyte SSD. It doesn't really have room for much of anything else in it. There's also no front-facing USB ports, which is annoying, because wireless devices do not like to try to go through that. So, I have extension cables. This extension cable is for my Xbox adapter. It's actually the Xbox adapter for an Xbox th One, even though I'm using an Xbox Series controller, because they use the same adapters. It's just bigger than normal, and also you'll notice that it's bent. You can kind of see it, like if I'm pushing it down, it doesn't really lie flat. Um, a cat bent it at some point, it still works just fine, so I haven't bothered replacing it. Little dongle for my wireless trackball. Then I have the HDMI cable going from here up to here, so I can use the TV as one of the monitors. We've got a wireless antenna. I moved it out of the way, so it's actually capable of seeing anything. Plus webcam. So we've got one HDMI going up here, and then through an adapter we have another HDMI going to here. This is my portable monitor. It is a 15-inch 1080p display that's extremely bright, and for some reason the bezel keeps trying to pop off. Um, basically, this is a laptop monitor that got thrown into its own case. It actually comes with its own stand that folds over and counts as its case, and it's USB-C powered, because yes, I needed even more USB-C powered equipment. Unfortunately, it uses a micro HDMI cable, which is what that bottom cable is. Or, not micro, mini HDMI, and that's obnoxious. But, and it's the only one that I have, so if I break it, I might be up a river for this trip. But this is kind of an optional setup. The reason why I have this here isn't for when I'm in a hotel, but when I'm actually back at Creator's house, they only have one monitor, so I needed a second. Microphone. Same microphone that I normally use. I had to bring it with me because I have a job interview tomorrow, and I wasn't expecting to have one, so that was the last moment. Oh crap, I better throw in a microphone. I do have my headset with me, but I decided that was not good enough audio quality. And if I'm going to be recording videos, I might as well use a microphone. Anyway, down here is the trash can that's going to get very, very full very, very fast. So uh, I'll get to that in a moment. Plus the box. Um, rim phone. Bag. Refrigerator that doesn't really do much. It keeps beverages lukewarm. I have had this bottle of water in here for a while. It is still room temperature. I'm just going to... Put it up here. Also, yogurt. I swear that's actually warmed up. Oh, the ice box is actually completely frozen over. Cool. Um, snacks. Snacks brought from home. They'll be shared with Kate here, but these are the ones that I bought intentionally with the idea that I'd be eating them here. And my little information for guests about quarantine. Uh, so this is what I was talking about when it came to food. So, for reference... Breakfast is at 8, lunch at 12, dinner at 5, and evening meal at 9. I am getting four meals a day here. 
Holy crap. That's a lot. So, yeah. Um, I'm in quarantine for the next four days. So, it says ten, but where does it say it at? It might not be on this piece of paper, but on a different one. Oh, yeah. The quarantine period may be shortened if the person in question documents a negative test result by PCR during their quarantine period, taken no earlier than three or seven days upon arrival, depending on when you arrive, or where you arrive from. So, for the U.S., that's three days. So, on day three, I can schedule a... That's down here. Complimentary tests can be arranged no earlier than three or seven days upon arrival. If I'd like a test, contact the security team, and they'll test me, and 24 hours later, I will be free, assuming that I don't have COVID. I am fully vaccinated, for reference, but Norway doesn't recognize American vaccination. Well, more specifically, ooh, you can see, picture and picture and picture and picture and picture. Um, oh, that fox playing the fiddle actually kind of looks like a cat from this angle. Um, Norway only recognizes vac uh, proof of vaccination from countries in Europe, specifically the EU, the uh, Scandinavian Union, and the United Kingdom. So, or not the EU proof, which is actually being used by more European countries. Sorry, I'm having to reposition. My arms are really tired. Um, that are recognized by more European countries than the EU itself, but still, it's Europe. Which means they don't recognize American proof of vaccination. Now, to be fair, we don't have a federal proof of vaccination, but what they want is a digital, and basically a piece of paper with a QR code on it that proves that you have been vaccinated. I actually have that. My healthcare provider provides it. But... The only way that's valid is if I had a national ID number for Norway. Other European Union countries will accept American vaccination passport or, or American vaccination proof of vaccination and then generate an EU passport. But Norway's not a part of the EU, so obviously they can't do that. Actually, they could. Fun fact. But they choose to only allow their Norwegian proof of vaccination program to be eligible for people with residency numbers which I don't have. I'm not a resident of Norway yet. So that means I'm in quarantine for four days. Yeah, I'm going to be recording a lot of videos. Speaking of, I forgot to mention, I actually did bring a tripod with me. That's actually my selfie stick that you've ha seen me use on a couple of videos. It is technically a tripod or a monopod, I guess. I don't know. Does it count as a tripod when... It does have three feet, but they're really low to the ground. I mean, really low to the ground. Oh, well. <sighs> so, yeah, that's about it. Um, the decor in here looks very familiar. In fact, I have watched a vlog about somebody's uh, stay of quarantine in Bergen in this exact room. And I've actually been in this hotel before. But not this room. I think that... Hold on. I think that this map was actually on the wall behind me, and that picture was on this little hanging thing. I like maps. Anyway, that's about it. Just thought I'd do a quick... It's nearly 20 minutes. Quick video updating what I've been doing and so on. Um, I'm surviving. Internet access... Oh, I forgot to mention. The view... The view is, it's pitch black outside. Seriously, it's Norway, and it's, like, what? 2025 right now? Ooh, weird reflection in that corner. I don't know what it's actually focusing on. There's nothing purple out there that I see at all. And you'll notice that it's <clears throat> fairly quiet in here. It's less quiet if I open the window. This is as much fresh air as I'm going to be getting. Actually, I am allowed to go to the stairwell for fresh air, and I'm apparently allowed to go on for a walk once a day. We'll see if I'm going to end up doing that, because the weather's kind of crummy here, and I'm really tired. So, that's about it. I'll be trying to record some Vandal Hearts, although I apparently didn't remember to save the actual disc for Vandal Hearts on my local machine. 
even though I have my save, so I may end up having to yar-har the Japanese version and repatch the translation, and also find the cover for the game, because that's the other image that I'm missing. But, let's be honest, what else am I going to do? Bye, Internet.